Okay, today we are going to create some text. We're going to give it a, a ember glowing look as if it were on fire. Kind of like charcoal, uh, charcoal glowing look there. So let's start with creating a new file. And I'm just going to accept my default there that I have. And then I'm going to select the marquee tool. Rectangular marquee tool. And I'm going to outline that and then I want to fill it and I want to fill with black let's deselect the marquee tool and now we have now that we have our uh, black background let's select the font let's go to the type tool now the font you can use any font that you want I'm using Times New Roman I'm setting mine at 120 points and we'll type in the word Ashley. Alright, let's bring this out. Grab my move tool, bring it out. Let's set it about right there. And let's go down here to 100%. And bring it up so we see what we're doing. And because the H and L is so close together, I'm going to kern it just a bit first. So grab the tool again, stick it between H and L. I think I'm going to give it a space of about 50. And I'm going to bring the Y and E in just a little bit, say minus 25. That looks good. Okay. Now we have, let's go back to our move tool here. And now we have that we have our word or text that we want to do the effects on. We're going to go to our, uh, now that we have our text, we're going to go to our FX menu. And we're going to choose color overlay. And we're going to double click the color panel here. Okay, now that we have the text or the word that we want to um, set on fire here, we're going to go to the FX menu. And we're going to select color overlay. We'll double click the color panel there, or click on it, I should say. Change the hue to 30. Saturation and brightness is good at 100%. Just accept that. And click OK. And then we're going to go to, uh, excuse me, shouldn't have clicked OK. Uh, we're going to go to Interglow. And we'll click on this color panel. And we're going to uh, change the hue to 50, saturation to 100. And brightness to 100 is good as well. And then I'm going to switch the screen to what's considered the hot, hottest of the modes here. Linear Dodge Add. And let's bring the opacity up to 100%. Let's go ahead and raise the size up. Just to say 2. We'll add 2 more here to 7. Okay, now we're going to go to Outer Glow. We'll click on the color panel there. Let's bring the hue down to 15%. Saturation and brightness at 100% will be good. We'll make sure that the opacity is set at 100%. Let's bring that size up to 10. And now we're going to make some changes to satin. It's going to darken up the inside a little bit. And uh, the defaults that, that they have should be good. You should have a Gaussian blur here. Uh, opacity is at 100%. But let's change the color. So we'll keep hue at 15. Uh, we'll keep hue at 15. Saturation at 100%. And brightness at 50%. And select OK. And make sure that the opacity value is at 100%. And make sure the opacity value is at 100% on your satin. Okay, well you can use this angle value here. You kind of drag it around see what it does. Make sure you got your preview checked. I am think I'm going to go to about, let's say 17%. And distance of oh, about 10%. And I think 14%. I think that looks pretty good right there. 
so we'll leave it just like that and once you're done with that go ahead and just click OK and now you have all your layers effects and this was the original letters I had red and now we have that now now we're gonna do a couple other effects and then we'll be done with this okay now we want because we want to uh, leap, make sure this text is editable when we're done so you can put any name in here that you want we're gonna right click and we'll create a smart object convert to smart object and you'll notice that it converts it to a smart object object right here and now that we have uh, now that we have the smart object let's go to our filter command and let's go to distort ripple and I believe the default is medium let's set it to large and let's take the amount value down to about 20 percent so it just gives us just a little bit of ripple effect there and select OK okay and we're going to want to select a ripple effect again so just the first one there and let's go ahead and set this one to medium and let's bring this up say about 60 percent select OK okay now let's look under our smart objects on the ripple effects we have just a little character hit here uh, we want to edit the blending option on the top one so we're going to double click that and we're going to uh, slit, set it to about 50% so we have 50-50 on both there we go and then just click OK now the next thing we want to do we want to confirm that we have our foreground color is black background color is white you can press your D key to make sure you have that and then we're going to want to select the ball relief filter and you choose the sketch command and we're going to want to get the ball relief now in uh, Windows CS5 you should see the sketch command right in this area in Windows CS6 they move that to the uh, to the uh, filter gallery and you see sketch ball relief that's what we want right there and it kind of gives it this metallic look now you can accept the defaults except for I think lighting is set to bottom as default we just want to make sure it's from the top that way it looks like the fire is coming from the bottom to the top so and just select OK now we have this metallic look which is not what we want so we want to go back here double click on the filter gallery there and we'll go from the normal mode to the overlay there it is get back to our, our color that we had there there we go now we're back to where we started from so now you have your text where you want now you don't really still need this filter mask now that we're done so you can right click and you can delete that filter mask and there you go and that's all there is to it i hope this helps someone have a good day